بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هيستامين انتولرانس is a common non-immune condition marked by disrupted histamine metabolism and an accumulation of histamine beyond the body's ability to eliminate it. This build-up of histamine is one of several factors that contribute to food intolerance. Welcome again to Derma Immunology. I'm Nagla El Mongi, Professor of Dermatology, Cairo University, and our video today will be about histamine intolerance. Here is my first reference in this video, Histamine Intolerance, Symptoms, Diagnosis, and Beyond, that was published in Nutrients in April 2024. My second reference, Histamine Intolerance, a kind of pseudo-allergic reaction, that was published in Biomolecules, March 2022. Food intolerance is a negative reaction to a food or one of its components that does not involve the immune system. Research indicates that food intolerance affects roughly one in five people globally, underscoring its importance. It's essential to distinguish food intolerance from food allergy, a less common condition that involves an immune response to a protein in food. Histamine intolerance is a condition identified and defined only in the 21 uh, century with an estimated prevalence of 3 to 6 percent occurring more frequently in children. Due to its wide range of non-specific symptoms such as itching, flushing, swelling, bloating after eating, diarrhea, abdominal pain, constipation, dizziness, headache, low blood pressure, and rapid heart rate, histamine intolerance was found misdiagnosed in the past as other conditions including food allergies, irritable bowel syndrome, various food intolerances, celiac disease, xenophilic gastroenteritis, urticaria, and systemic mastocytosis. Histamine is a biogenic amine that produces various biological effects across multiple cell types by activating specific histamine receptors. Histamine levels are relatively high in the gastrointestinal tract where the primary receptor subtypes are H1 and H2. Histamine acts on various cells including neurons, and smooth muscle to exert its effects within the digestive system. Also, histamine is found in various foods such as cheese, wine, fermented products, uh, spinach, certain types of fish, meat, and more. Histamine intolerance arises when histamine accumulates faster than the body can eliminate it. In healthy individuals, an enzyme called intestinal diamine oxidase breaks down histamine from food However, when diamine oxidase enzyme activity is inhibited by factors like certain medications or its production is reduced due to internal factors like genetic mutations, the body's ability to process histamine is compromised. This will result in histamine buildup, causing symptoms that often resemble allergic reactions. Alcohol also has been shown to increase the release of endogenous histamine, slowing its breakdown due to the excess of biogenic amines. Other factors that may contribute to histamine intolerance by reducing diamine oxidase activity include deficiencies in certain vitamins and minerals such as vitamin C and copper. The menstrual cycle has also been identified as a co contributing factor. Now let's talk about the etiology of histamine intolerance. As I have already mentioned the diamine oxidase enzyme plays a key role in regulating and protecting the body from high levels of exogenous histamine ingested through food. Clinical studies indicate that individuals with histamine intolerance symptoms have lower plasma diamine oxidase levels. This underscores the importance of diamine oxidase as a protective factor against histamine intolerance and shows how a deficiency in this enzyme whether due to genetic, pathological, or pharmacological factors can predispose individuals to the condition. Many studies identified several genetic polymorphisms that significantly impact diamine oxidase enzyme activity. Also, they noted that certain genetic polymorphisms have a more pronounced effect in specific ethnic groups.
Along with ge the genetic factors, diamine oxidase deficiency can also be caused by medications or specific diseases. For example, patients with inflammatory bowel disease have been shown to experience reduced diamine oxidase activity, which correlates with mucosal damage. This suggests that diamine oxidase activity could serve as a potential marker for gastrointestinal mucosal integrity. Also, diamine oxidase deficiency has been observed in certain functional gastrointestinal disorders, such as carbohydrate malabsorption and also in non-celiac gluten sensitivity. As I have just said, alcohol and certain medications have been found to temporarily and reversibly reduce diamine oxidase activity. This leads to elevated histamine levels in the bloodstream, causing symptoms that resemble allergic reactions. For example, the blood pressure-lowering medications, ferabamil, strongly inhibits diamine oxidase enzymatic activity. Other drugs that can contribute to histamine overload include widely used drugs like acetylcysteine, metoclobromide, dihydrolazine, uh, amitriptyline, chloroquine, and clavulinic acid. In addition to the reduced ability to degrade oral histamine due to diamine oxidase deficiency, disruptions in the intestinal flora or dysbiosis can also contribute to elevated histamine levels. Certain bacteria are believed to synthesize and secrete histamine, further exacerbating the condition. So, food rich in histamine may trigger histamine intolerance symptoms even with a small excess of histamine due to insufficient diamine oxidase activity. However, if we get symptoms of excess histamine from food, while the diamine oxidase levels are normal, the condition should be diagnosed as histamine poisoning. In this table, we can see the food th that cause histamine intolerance. The first group is food rich in histamine, like fish, smoked meat products, and cheese. Second group is foods that promote the release of histamine, like citrus fruits, papaya, strawberries, egg whites, chocolate, nuts, fish, pork, cheese, fermented sausage, green peppers, wheat germ. The third group is foods that competitively inhibit diamine oxidase activity, like fish, fermented sausage, the symptoms of histamine intolerance are diverse and can affect both intestinal and extra-intestinal systems. These symptoms are often non-specific and vary widely, as histamine intolerance involves an excess of histamine entering the systemic circulation through the intestine. This excess interacts with histamine receptors located throughout the body, making it difficult to establish a typical clinical pattern. The occurrence of varied Unpredictable symptoms, especially after eating, strongly suggest the presence of histamine intolerance. So, as I have just said, histamine intolerance symptoms could be intestinal or extra-intestinal. Intestinal symptoms, example, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, discomfort. Extra-intestinal symptoms in the skin, uh, like pruritus, urticaria, dermatitis, flushing, nervous system like headache, migraine, cardiovascular system like tachycardia, hypotonia, collapse, respiratory system like dyspnea, sneezing, rhinorrhea, rhinitis, congestion. Researchers found that the most common symptoms of histamine intolerance were gastrointestinal in nature. And among skin-related symptoms, pruritus was the most frequently reported. Due to the wide range of symptoms, and their potential overlap with other conditions, along with the lack of a standardized diagnostic approach, there are no specific direct tests available to diagnose histamine intolerance. However, research suggests that since the condition is associated with factors that reduce the levels and or the activity of diamine oxidase enzymes, measuring diamine oxidase could serve as a potential marker for detecting the disease. Still, its exact reference value for diagnosing histamine intolerance has not yet been clearly established. One of the limitations of serum diamine oxidase is its variability throughout the day in the same individual. 
As a result, it is recommended not to rely only on serum diamine oxidase levels for diagnosis, but rather to use them in conjunction with other diagnostic tests. The skin prick test has been proposed as a way to diagnose histamine intolerance. In this test, the redness from histamine persists longer than in healthy individuals, suggesting a reduced ability of the body to eliminate histamine. However, this test has limitations such as its inability to distinguish between histamine intolerance and other allergic conditions. Also, the rate of histamine degradation observed in the skin may not accurately represent its breakdown in the intestines. The histamine challenge test is another diagnostic method that can be used to diagnose histamine intolerance. Beyond its diagnostic value, it's also useful for identifying individual tolerance thresholds, meaning it can determine the dose that triggers a response in susceptible individuals. However, despite its usefulness in assessing tolerance, accurately quantifying the amount of histamine in food can be challenging. One drawback of this approach is, uh, is that it requires supervision by specialists. In the test, subjects consume 75 mg of histamine, a dose generally considered safe for healthy uh, individuals, although there have been reports of side effects even in healthy people. Other methods for diagnosing histamine intolerance have been proposed, but their use is limited due to practical issues. For example, analyzing fecal histamine levels has been suggested as a diagnostic approach, but it is unreliable because the intestinal microbiota is a major source of histamine. Genetic testing may be necessary in certain cases as some individuals have a genetic predisposition to histamine intolerance. Researchers have identified several single nucleotide polymorphisms that increase the likelihood of having the condition. This genetic test can be used alongside with other diagnostic methods to confirm the diagnosis in susceptible individuals. So, a diagnosis of histamine intolerance should be based on a combination of tests and medical history to prevent misdiagnosis as the condition shares symptoms with several other diseases. As regards the management, several strategies are available for managing histamine intolerance. With a low histamine diet being the primary treatment, the first step is to discontinue medications that interfere with diamine oxidase. Other approaches include supplementing diamine oxidase to assist in breaking down ingested histamine. In more severe cases, antihistamine medications may be prescribed, but their use is typically recommended for short-term relief. As regards the use of antihistamines in histamine intolerance, researchers have emphasized the need for further studies to evaluate the effectiveness of this treatment. Some antihistamines, such as cimetidine and bromethazine, may even reduce diamine oxidase activity. In addition to the previously mentioned strategies, research suggests supplementing with minerals and vitamins such as copper, zinc, vitamin C, and vitamin B6 if there is a known deficiency, malnutrition, or restrictive diet. These nutrients serve as cofactors for the diamine oxidase enzyme and should be used alongside other treatment approaches. As a conclusion, histamine intolerance is a complex condition that can greatly impact quality of life. Those affected patients experience a wide range of nonspecific symptoms, making diagnosis and effective management difficult. And as a precision and personalized medicine advance, enhanced diagnostic methods and safer and more effective treatments can greatly reduce disease burden and offer significant relief to patients. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. And I'm reminding you again to subscribe to the channel and activating the alarming bell. And thank you.